Hey there beautiful, welcome back to What Mommy Loves. Today we're diving into a topic that's close to every expecting parent's heart and that is labor and delivery. Can you imagine, we're here already, yes. So we finished off with the first, second and third trimester and if you haven't seen my content on those three, go check it out, link below. I'm so excited to share more about what to expect during labor and delivery and as you know, everyone is different and everyone's experiences are different so this is just a guide into what to expect and it's not like a rule of thumb that these are the things that you're going to experience during your labor and delivery so without further ado let's dive right in All right, lovely mamas, let's talk about the very first act, which is early label. And early label is usually filled with anticipation and excitement. I remember feeling excited about going into label. Right, so let me share my own experience with early labor. So I was about 38 to 39 weeks pregnant and it was the 1st of February, a lovely Saturday, sunny morning and I was just, you know, feeling good vibes all through. And then I spoke to my bump and I said to it, I mentioned my daughter's name Nina because I already knew I was going to give her the name Nina anyway. So I said, Nina, today is a lovely day to be delivered, you know. And I jokingly said that, and I tell you, right, within an hour of me saying those words, because I literally just said it and carried on with my day. And then I started having contractions. And it was so fascinating that just me telling my bump those words kick-started my delivery journey, you know. So when they say speak to your bump, it does carry meaning. Those babies listen. So yeah, speak positively to your bump. Always, every single time. And that's how early label signs happen. It happens with subtle signs, twinges here and there. But it's just your body's way of saying, hey, it's showtime. And that is just what kick-starts it, really. You might be noting some contractions and it's a good time to take note of your contractions. You know, make a note about how frequent they happen. It's also a golden rule that when in doubt, you should speak to a healthcare provider. And your healthcare provider will be there to help and guide you throughout your labor and delivery. After the early labor signs comes the active labor. So active labor is like the next level and this is when the intensity cranks up. This is when your contractions become more frequent. And it's just a time for you to practice some coping mechanisms. So you could have a coping mechanism such as deep breathing or rhythmic swaying or even busting a move. Yes, like dancing. Sometimes some people swear by dancing that dancing actually sees them through, you know, those contractions. For me personally, the two mechanisms that I used was deep breathing and also rhythmic swaying. And when I say rhythmic swaying, I mean rocking myself left to right just to try and ease off that pain. So if you find a coping mechanism that suits you, you should definitely give it a go. And this is also a time when you might be surrounded by your support system. Support system in the sense that you might be surrounded with your partner or your sisters, friends, grandmother, mother, doula, or even the midwives themselves and the healthcare team. So they're all going to be there to cheer you on. And it's just a good time for you to take one contraction at a time. Just breathe through it. Stay in the zone and remain positive. The next phase is what I will call the transition phase. You've gone through the early signs of labor. You've gone through active labor. Now welcome to the ultimate birthday party. Like it's literally a birthday party for you and your little one. The transition phase is when things rev up and emotions might run wild at this phase. And you might be thinking, is this really happening? Yes, sis, it is really happening. This is the real deal. So you might be feeling a mix of exhaustion. You might even be seeking an epidural to ease the pain off. Or you might be excited and overwhelmed by the thought of 
holding your baby in your arms but this is such a lovely moment to embrace it is the transition phase and with every contraction and every push you're one minute closer to delivery natural delivery is not the only way to safely deliver a baby we also have cs as another option to safely deliver a baby and with every surge, every contraction, you're one bit closer to welcoming your bundle of joy. So stay positive, you can do it. When it comes to positions, I found squatting to be the right one for me. Due to gravity, it just helped me push down the baby quicker. I know I've seen in some movies where ladies lie down and then they deliver the baby. And this is not CS. This is like natural delivery where the lady lies down and then she gives birth. That didn't work for me. So what worked for me was me squatting because I just had the natural instinct to squat and push the baby down. So that was what worked for me. So I thought I should bring this up because you might be thinking, what position should I take for delivery? Squatting is a good one. You can try it out and see if it works for you. Another thing you might want to consider during labor is pain relief. And there is a lot of information that you should know about this topic. Of course, you know or you might know that there is epidurals and the epidurals help with pain management. But this is a topic that you will need to consult your healthcare provider to guide you on this if this is the right medication for you to use during labor and delivery. Another one is deep breathing. As you may know, it will be good for you to know that you can think about it as inhaling courage and exhaling tension. Yes, tension because the tension is the real. Let's consider choosing where you deliver your baby, right? You might want to deliver your baby at a hospital or at home. The decision is up to you and this is a big decision. So you will need to weigh down the pros and cons of both. Hospitals have more expertise and medical support in navigating any challenges that might happen during labor and delivery. While on the flip side, with home birth, this can offer comfort and a familiar surrounding when delivery occurs. From pushing to delivery, the moment we've been waiting for, the grand finale. This is when you get to meet your baby for the very first time. Imagine their tiny, cute, squishy little face, those little fingers wrapping around your fingers, and all of the culmination of months of anticipation. You've gotten to the moment whereby you look at your baby and you just admire the beauty of life. For some people, this is a moment whereby they get a flood of joy and love from their family and friends. And it's just a new chapter of your life that you can't change for anything else. From the very first family photo that you take with your little one, all you have to do from now on is to embrace the cuddles, savour the quiet moments and let the adventure of parenthood unfold. So after delivery, then comes recovery and healing. I'm sure at some point you will deliver your placenta as well and then you have your first bath. Your body has done a wonderful job of creating and giving birth to a human so it's time to give it that tender loving care it needs. To rest as much as possible during this period, you don't need to get into any exercises until after six weeks of your delivery. Just let your body heal at its own pace. Do not rush it. And I know sometimes your emotions might get the best of you, but just take things easy and feel a mix of joy, exhaustion, eat nutritious food. You might consider breastfeeding or bottle feeding, whichever one you consider. Just take things easy throughout the process and get to know your baby, get to speak to your baby, get to know your baby's cues for when they're hungry. Or you can even get to see them smile and give you that innocent, lovely smile. Also consider doing skin to skin as it's a lovely way to bond with your baby as well. And just take things easy. That is it for this video. Thank you for sharing this precious time with me. I would love to hear your stories about your labor and delivery experience in the comments below. 
this could help a mom out there who is seeking for this information. So diverse stories, diverse experiences are appreciated and welcome. Remember, you're not alone on this journey and the strength within you is a force to be reckoned with. Until next time, take care of yourself, be kind to yourself and know that you are part of a tribe that celebrates you. I wish you all the best in your pregnancy journey and I'll see you in the next one where we talk about the fourth trimester. Speak soon. Bye.